Hi everyone. My name is Andrea and this is my first uh, YouTube or booktube video ever. Um, I've been waiting for a while to kind of join in and participate. So here I am. Um, I thought since this is kind of my intro, I would just sort of tell you a little bit about myself, my reading preferences and what I've currently been reading and what I think about what I'm currently reading. So one of the books that I just finished for the Shirley Jackson Awards was um, The Night Ocean, which was a Lovecraftian story. Uh, I tried to read all of the nominees this year and I'll leave a link below with all of my reviews for the nominees. And yesterday they announced a winner, which was The Hole. And this is the first ever Korean nominee and winner. So it was really cool. Um, I wrote a review on this and I'll leave it down below as well because there was a lot to cover and also there are some things that are visually cool about this book and I took a picture of that as well mainly that the beginning of every chapter has this hole and it gets progressively bigger as if to engulf the reader and you get consumed by the hole and the word the hole in Korean uh, means loneliness or the word used on the cover I should say also translates directly to loneliness or emptiness so there's a lot of psychological aspects to what makes this thriller dark fairy tale novel so Shirley Jackson-esque so this is something to look for if you are interested in that kind of stuff the second book I've been reading is The Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. I know a lot of people love Robin Hobb on booktube and they've read the entire Realm of the Elder uh, Realm of the Elder Links. Yes. And I have not. I've read only this one and I'm only halfway through it. It it's really good. Um, there are ships, they come to life, there are families and clans who fight for it, there's a lot of character development and relationship dynamics. It is a weird halfway between Tolkien and George R. R. Martin. Um, I wouldn't compare with either because Robin Hobb does her own thing that's kind of interesting, but it's not over-the-top gruesome and action-packed and it's not over-the-top... Um, well, Tolkien is bae, so I don't know what I want to say. The, the last book that I want to talk about is The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs by Steve Brissotti. I've been reading this for a few days and I'm almost done. And it's a wonderful nonfiction work. I uh, highly recommend if you want to reawaken that sort of dormant love and passion that I think we all have since childhood in our hearts for dinosaurs that we've kind of put aside or left behind. I remembered just now how much I love dinosaurs and how cool they are and it was written in such a way that it inspires you to want to go to the museum I went to the museum because of this book yesterday I had to go see some dinosaur bones um, so before reading this book the only paleontologist that I was introduced to before was Ross Geller from Friends and I think the difference between a real paleontologist and Ross Geller is that it seems like real pa paleontologists are more like Indiana Jones than Ross Geller. What I mean by that is I did not know how much traveling was involved in like for being a paleontologist. By, by page 100 the author or the professor had already gone to Argentina, China, Portugal, Scotland, and Poland. And I was in shock as to how much traveling was involved and how much teamwork is involved. And I really appreciated the way he gave a nod to all of his colleagues and kind of told the reader what they were working on. And there are some pictures in this book where we'll show you the excavations and the teams in certain places, but it involves a lot more traveling than I thought it would and that's just something to kind of keep in mind I guess if you are considering going into academia in certain 
fields is that some of them might involve a lot of traveling, which, you know, for some it's a pro, for others it's a con. But uh, one of the things I had to do was print out this um, timeline, which I've been using as a bookmark because sometimes the author skips between um, time periods and I forget which ones came first. And the author sort of focuses on this period the most. Like here, these two. Skips over one. Um, yes. And so the Permian and the a Triassic threshold. Um, and it gets much more detailed and talks about specific dinosaurs as you progress. But again, I haven't quite finished it, so it's part of what I'm currently reading. And that's about it. And I think I'm probably going to do a kind of mid-year book freakout tag so I could just um, let you know what I've been reading this year because I decided to join booktube in July. So, <laughs> yes, in time for the booktube-a-thon, which I'm really excited for. So, yes. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!